at all. Students, thank you so much for taking the opportunity, even though you had to be in class. But this is going to be an exciting session. My name is Andy Sokolovich, and I'm the Vice President of Economic Development for the Clinton Regional Development Corporation. So today, we had some problems with the internet over at Big River Packaging, uh, so we moved it all down into my basement studio. So we're actually coming to you right here from Clinton, Iowa, and I'm excited to introduce you to a professional in the town that I think you guys are really going to like. He's got some great stuff to share with you, and he works with empty boxes. So how many of you are super excited about empty boxes? Well, after this, you're going to be, I promise you. So without further ado, I'm going to slide out of here and I'm actually going to let Kip Simpson hop in and tell you a little bit about what he does over at Big River Packaging. Sound cool? Hi, Kip. How you doing? I'm doing great. I've, I've been looking forward to this. Did you get the uh, barge full of stuff? Oh my gosh, we got tons of stuff. Those These guys don't even know it yet. They haven't even seen it all. All right. Well, let's uh, let me get uh, things kind of organized here on my screen. Okay, now I'm more organized. So you guys, uh, you, this is not a dream. You are literally sitting in school, about to have a guy talk to you about the manufacturing of empty boxes. Amazing. <laughs> well, let's let's uh, again. My name is Kip Simpson. Or who, how many show of hands? I'm going to ask you guys to to interact with me, okay? Because I don't want to be bored, and you guys probably don't want to be bored either, right? Right, right. Just nod behind your mask. I can see your head. I can't see your. Okay. So, uh, um, yes. So, how many people know where Big River Packaging is in town? R show of hands. All right, it's by Taco John's and uh, the mattress store. Okay, um, let's just get started right where all great stories start with toilet paper. Ms. Lutz, can you bust out the toilet paper? There should be like four rolls. Can you can you hand those out? And absolutely. All right, and please give everyone, in addition to toilet paper, uh, one of the boxes. Everybody gets at least or it gets one box that's either white or brown that has the writing on the inside. Yep, I'll that too. And a cookie cutter. And then red and black that I 3D printed in my dining room for you guys. Okay, so we'll do the boxes first, Kip. As I trip over the bag. So these are going to be the boxes first, right? You got it, yep. Oh, this is the one with the writing on it. Everybody gets one of those. Yep, everybody gets one, and uh, you guys can get a white one or a brown one, just whatever trips you trigger, whatever you, whatever makes you feel fancy. Okay. In a box sort of a way. And while those are getting handed out, um, so please make sure that one of the toilet paper people, and if you did get a roll of toilet paper, and I want you guys to know that my plan was to give everyone a roll of toilet paper. Uh, but I went to Walmart yesterday and the shelves were bare. So that's what, what I heard too. That really people were toilet paper shopping. Yeah, so that's that's like rolled gold right there. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I did see on Facebook last night that they restocked, but but still, you know, hold on to it like Tesla stock. Who who knows what'll happen? But uh, if if one of the toilet paper people could also get that uh, the rubber stamp and the stamp pads too. That that will come into play in a weird way in a little while. Is that this Kip, right? Yep, that's right. No, that not the, those are those are uh, dies. Okay. Those, those will come into play later too, obviously. Okay, but the rubber. Let's see. Yeah, it's just a bit like a an office stamp, like top okay. secret. Everybody gets one of those too, a uh, white one or a brown one. Those little C's. Yep, yep, okay. they're passing. Mm -hmm. All right, and I think, that's, I think those are all the materials that we need to get started with. I've heard a, I've heard a lot of people say, hey, what do you guys do in that building? There's never any cars there. Anybody have any idea before this what, what we did? It's packaging in the name, but we, I've heard some pretty weird stories, some of which I can't share with you guys. <laughs> But uh, we, we just make empty boxes. We make food packaging and we sell over the internet. Who knows what e-commerce is? Who can define that for me? Someone, oh, I see you. I see you in the back. You raised a finger. Please, please share. You changed your mind? Anybody else know what e-commerce is? Yeah, I do. 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 Yeah
Bailey. Sound off. Okay. okay. No. No. Nobody knows what e-commerce is. Who? You guys ready to tap out? I, I can tell you. He's just selling stuff over the internet. How, how many of you, show of hands, have purchased something online? All right, rock and roll. There we go. Uh, if you raised your hand, you you just warmed this box maker's heart a little bit. Uh, yeah, we we just we sell our boxes online. We we actually have orders come to us from uh, Dubai, Germany, Ireland. Yeah. Not not a lot, not a lot of uh, international orders, but our boxes made here in Clinton, Iowa, literally get sent all over the world. And a lot of times when we do that, the cost to ship them there is more than the boxes themselves. And why do people order boxes from us when you know there's other places available? And the answer is because they're we do a really good job. They're great. Uh, we we've a actually asked our every time a customer places an order, they get a survey email and, and that email asks, why do you buy from us? And the answer overwhelmingly is because of our quality, uh, because we care. Okay, so how, does everybody have a, a something to write with? Yep. All right, and uh, you see that I, I used our little CNC sample maker table to, uh, to list the points on the inside of the box. So we can kind of follow along We'll break this into chunks to make it uh, easier to to digest into your brain folds. Is everybody with me? Yep, I think they are. Yep. All right. So someone has uh, someone has uh, a toilet paper and someone has the stamps, right? The stamper and the stamp pads. Oh, hey, you know what? Let me get this. These are the stamp pads. The stamper, right? Yeah, you got it right there. Yeah. Got one stamper, and then we got some ink stamp pads. Do we have one stamper? Yep, got one stamper. That's all we need. Do you have one? And we go. Okay, yep, we're good. All right. So, uh, so whoever has a – someone uh, hold up the – some toilet paper person, and please – that I hope that doesn't stick as a nickname. Unroll a little bit of it, will you? Unroll it. Toilet paper, okay. yeah. This is this is the first ingredient in making a box, believe it or not. What's toilet paper made out of? Paper. Paper. What's paper made out of? Water. Wood. I don't know. What is it? Wood. Yes, trees, trees. It's made out of plants, right? So okay. what you have in your hand there, that is the beginning of a box. It, it, it is a roll of plant material, cellulose material. Uh, it's paper. And the, the way that toilet paper is made is very similar to the way that the material on your cereal box is made. So the the roll you have, hold, hold up that roll of toilet paper, will you? Hold it. Everybody see that? Everybody knows what toilet paper looks like? Well, the rolls we have are a little bit different. I'm going to share the screen there. All right. So you see this. These are our rolls. It's like giant uh, toilet paper for a giant, right? Oh, my. And, and these rolls, I asked Linda yesterday. I'm like, hey, can you go, go stand next to these for scale? And uh, so th those are how a box starts out in our facility. Big rolls. They come in on semis or, or a train, and we got it. You can see how big they are relative to the forklift. And we actually, we actually uh, have these all shoved to one side of the, to the warehouse. What? How many rolls of toilet paper do you think it would take if it dropped on your foot? It would hurt. Anybody have any guesses? No. What's that? No toilet paper. Of the toilet paper? Yeah. On your foot. So. I don't, know. I don't know either, guys. I tried to Google it, but uh, Google's like, what What are you talking about? Um, so looking at these rolls that are stacked up here on your screen, um, how many of these do you think it would take to land on your foot in order for it to hurt? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So so look at the – Does it, can you see the label? Can you, anybody make out the weight there of how much this roll on the bottom weighs? Um, can you see it? 
2373 pounds 2373 pounds right so holy that, smokes yeah that that and that's just one that that's that would this uh, we have a special fork truck with a big crab claw on the end of it, big what we call a clamp truck, and that's what we use to move these around. So those are on the one side of the building, and it's like again, it's a big toilet paper roll. And the first place we take this to for printed carton cartons is our printing press, and that looks like this. This is where that roll goes in. How many of you guys, by show of hands, when you use the last little bit of toilet paper, you actually replace the roll? <laughs> Do you replace it? You get all if, if you don't, that's evil, and you should uh, make the universe a better place by actually replacing the roll. But this is this is kind of the the terrifying void that the next person would look into, right? When that with an absence of of vital TP would be. So the roll goes right in there in our our printing press, and and I like I said, I hope you don't leave. Uh, the next person needing to do their business uh, with this sort of situation. But uh, when you put the roll in into the printing press, the pressman will snake that through. And you can see that this is not some simple uh, little deal. It's, it's actually pretty complicated. The pressman will weave it through the machine. And the little dangly piece of uh, toilet paper that you have there, what that represents is this ribbon of paperboard. And we call that a web the web and this is brad brad is watching the paper <laughs> and it's more exciting than it sounds being a pressman is incredibly complicated and if you see that light that's above brad the that's has a specific color temperature and what that means is that it is emulating as close as possible the color of sun's light and what he's doing he's standing on this platform and he's making sure that the color is consistent and if next time you go to the grocery store and you're looking at uh, a shelf at all the items that are on the shelf that got printed, take a look and you'll see that uh, sometimes the color varies from from box to box. And that's because they're, uh, they're people that they have in their buildings like Brad uh, aren't as good as Brad. They're crummy at their jobs and they don't keep color uh, within specification. So, OK, let's go. Let's go back to uh, the toilet paper and the stamp person. Let's uh, let's see. Is this back to me? Yeah. All right. So who has the stamp? Who's got the stamper? Joe. Joe. Does. Joe. Joe. Yeah. Let's. Uh, okay, Joe. You're 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 a pressman now. Okay. So string out a little bit of toilet paper. Open that ink pad. Put the stamp on there and and stamp that toilet paper and tell me uh, tell me how it looks. Yeah. Roll out your toilet paper just a little bit. Joe, just make around. Stamp it. Stamp yeah, roll. Ready, Joe? Get some ink on there, man. Okay, stamp it on there. See what you got. All right. How's it look? How's it look? What do you think, Deander? How's it look? Not bad. Not bad. Where else? Ryan, how's it come here? Stamp it hard. Oh yeah, that's pretty good. It's pretty good. Do you have a piece of paper there? Stamp it on the piece of paper and tell me which one looks better. Okay. Stamp there. And then stamp this again. Go ahead. Stamp it there. Oh, I need it. Which one's better? The one on the paper versus toilet paper? I think the one on the paper is better. All right. The one on the paper is better. Why? What? And what, how is the paper different than the toilet paper? Yeah. Um, it's a paper. Why is the paper better than the toilet paper, guys? Yeah. What, what, what's the difference? What do you think? Ella, it's what? It's smoother and stronger. Holy cow! Who said that? Ella. Ella said that. Do you have uh, those cupcakes? Can you give Ella a cupcake? Oh, a what? cupcake? What? Oh, absolutely! Hang on, Ella. Wait, cupcakes? Whoa! Oh, Ella, what are those? Oh, Ella, what are Ella. Look at this pretty box. Okay. Oh, okay. You're welcome. All right. I got some excitement going. Thanks, Joe. And, and can you give Joe a cupcake? Okay, hang on. Let's go.
Okay, we're ready, Kim. Can you give Joe the Pressman a cupcake too? Absolutely, Joe. And, more and, and, the, uh, and our our uh, the the gentleman that had the toilet paper on his desk. Can you give him his? Oh, one? We'll, we'll all three just, of them. Yeah, we'll just cupcake up all of our participants thus far. Okay. Wow, nice. So, so nice. if you guys, if you guys, you, the, the little cutout C's that you have. All right. The little cutout C's that you have, everybody has a brown one or a white one, right? If you look at that that little cutout, and you'll see on one side, it's uh, it's sort of soft and dull, and that's called the wire side. And on the other side, it's it's smoother. And okay. the, the cupcakeable answer that we got just a few minutes ago is 100% right in the bullseye. That in order to print, you need a surface that's strong, and it needs to be smooth, flat. And mm -hmm. which, which side of the paperboard do you think we generally print on? Okay. Totally not trying to light them up. It's a smooth side. The back on it? Yeah, the, the smooth side. That's right. The, the, on the white, the sort of satiny looking side. That's the side that we print on. That's the finished side. And a lot of times the paper has a coating and it's specifically made so that it will accept the image that the pressman or the printing press is putting on there. So, so far so good. Um, the craft, the craft paper, it's a little rougher. It's, it's really made to be kind of uh, just kind of just gets the job done. And it, it, typically you don't run craft paper through a printing press, but we do that because we like to do funky stuff. We'll talk more about funky stuff in a little, in a little while. So the printing press is, is really like uh, a stamp. And uh, I had, I sent actually a, uh, a print, a printing plate there. It's yellow. It's, it's been used if we could pass that around, please, so that uh, you guys can touch it and feel what it's like. It's really similar to a stamp, it's, and it's flexible. And the type of printing that we do at Big River Packaging is called a flexo printing. It's a flexo printing press. And just like you stamp the toilet paper in the paper, we send that web through, and the printing press takes up a bit of ink and then kisses the image to what we call the substrate or the paperboard. And that's, that's how we print. And like I said before, Brad, the, the gentleman you saw in the photo, it, it takes a lot of skill and a lot of experience to successfully print images because uh, there's just a lot of little things that can go wrong. And I, I should have said this at the beginning. It is simple and is kind of funny uh, as an empty box is. It is hilariously complicated to make an empty box uh, that has quality. And it's hilariously complicated not not to wander into a minefield of potential mistakes to where you cost the company a lot of money. Uh, so, yeah, I'm, I'm basically like a, like an astronaut. So anyway, uh, we got started in, in 2005, a long time ago. When, when were you guys born? Born in 2006. Were you five, Brian? When were you born? What year? 2007. 2007. Joe. 2007. When were you born, Sadie? 2006. So we got 2006 and 2007 mostly, Kip. All right, cool. So two years before you were born, we started we started our little empty box making company, and one of our first employees there was Todd, and Todd was hired as our pressman, and Todd is now our production manager. He um runs the plant if you guys look at your boxes with the little the the blanks and the stuff to write in there is everybody everybody see number one yep if number you see one. it please, please respond with silence and that way i know everybody's got it all right number one let, let's fill that in the first one is manufacturing can be a laboratory for me to discover my powers Manufacturing can be a laboratory for me to discover my power. And so Todd, our first pressman, uh, he it turned out that because of his organizational skills, his his ability to handle responsibility, his ability to lead, it made him a great person to head up our shop. 
and now Todd is responsible for all the manufacturing that we do in the plant. What's what's a laboratory? Someone tell me what that is. Laboratory? Yeah. Bailey, what's a laboratory? Has to do with chemistry? Doing some like experiments? Yeah. Science? Okay. Please cupcake those people if they haven't been cupcakeified already. Have you been cupcakeified, Bailey? Yes? No. Yes. 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 <laughs> She's been cupcakeified. Take away her cupcake. Take it away? Oh, no. Cup I just it's bakery malfeasance right there. Yeah. Yeah. No. <laughs> Uh, awesome, Bailey. Thank you. Yeah. So experiments, right? So in manufacturing, um, because there's so many different skills that are needed to actually make something, um, so many different operations to create a finished product. These, there are areas where people can can go and do kind of an experiment with their own abilities, their own interests, and they can sort of flex those muscles. They can sort of spread their wings and a uh, manufacturing plant can kind of be like a laboratory for the people that are in it. I have a colleague, Ann, and she was hired to answer the phone and help customers when they had questions. Uh, as an e-commerce company, a lot of people, you know, they buy things online and it's challenging when you're not in a store looking at a product. You know, a lot of times people have questions. So that's what she, what she was hired to do. Well, we were taking pictures of boxes one day, which can again as goofy as it sounds it can be tough to take a picture of a box and make it look not dumb so we were trying to stage it you know it might have been christmas and there's christmas bulbs and a little bit of holly and some mistletoe and elf or two whatever um and we were we were struggling nate my colleague and i we generally take the pictures and we were struggling and Anne saw what we were doing and she came by and she said hey uh, what if you did this or that and she was really good at it she just had an eye for what looks good. She is sort of an aesthetic type spirit, I guess you could say. And now Anne has gone on to design all the stickers that we make and sell. And she designed the specialty windows windows that we have. Um, do you do you guys see the boxes there that we sent that have like the spider window and the holiday windows? Yes, we're going to. Hang on. All right. Do you check these out the windows in front of them yeah and so those those are really hard to make and we have a lot of restrictions sort of lines we have to color within in order for those to be successful not only in sales that people actually want them but also that they can go through our machines to where people don't just go into the bathroom and cry because it's so hard to do and it's it's breaking our capital equipment that costs a lot of money. So it's it's really challenging to do that, but Ann works with the people that are out on the shop floor in really close coordination to figure out the best design that us is actually something that we can manufacture. And it's, it's fun, it's cool to do that. And that is something when we go, uh, on the road and are at shows like baking conventions. There's a convention for everything probably, but bakers are no exception. And the thing that people want to see when they come up to our booth are the special designs, the Santa that's waving at you, the spider box. What's weird is that like there's people buying the spider box all year long last year. Yeah, well, I have no idea why these people are buying a box of the big black spider on it, you know, around Thanksgiving not Halloween, but they are, but, and we're very happy for that. So, and designs though. So she started answering the phones and she's moved on to, now she's our social media marketing director. And just because the place that we're in has all these different aspects, all these different skills that have to come in to make things work, it, it serves as kind of a laboratory. Me, I started as an IT guy. Uh, who can tell me what IT is? Katie? Industrial tech, maybe. Any other guesses? Mackenzie? Working on computers? There we go. Yeah, cupcake these people. Cupcake, cupcake. Awesome. I'm like Oprah, but virtually. Yeah, uh, information technology. That's what that's what IT stands for. So when I was first hired at, hired at Big River Packaging, I was the third employee. It was the, the president and co-founder, Bob, and his business partner, John, and I was the third guy and I was to set up like the website and our servers the, all these machines have computers on them. 
And uh, I kind of, in this laboratory, I made the suggestion, hey, what if we tried to sell these online? And I went to get some uh, certifications. I went through school and got online marketing certifications. And now 95 plus percent of our business is online sales. So that was possible because I was in a manufacturing environment because there were opportunities to, you know, things we could do there that were a little bit different for me, for different than what I was initially hired to do. And the next point, number two, on your little boxes with the little blanks is, is a little bit like that too. Um, everybody look up, like look up above you. What do you, what do you see there? What was what did you say? Did someone say ceiling? Yeah. Please cupcake yeah. the ceiling speaker. Whoever said that. Yeah. How, how high do you think the ceiling is? How what? How high? How high? Yeah. Two of Mrs. Lipson. Probably. Probably. What do you think? 12 foot? 10, 12? Yeah, that's probably, that's probably right. Most most offices where people work, it's similar to your classroom. The, the ceilings are about 10 feet, 12 feet maybe. Uh, in our shop, because we need room for those big rolls that you saw earlier, as well as the racks that hold our finished goods, our ceiling is is like 30, let's, let's see, 30 feet high, something like that. You can see here, it's it's taller than your classroom, right? Yes. And this is sort of this this is kind of a metaphor. So looking at number two, uh, a production environment has a ceiling that gives me room to grow or move up. And I want to challenge you guys. Next time you're in an office, look, just kind of take a take a peek at the ceiling and, you, and you'll see that, you know, it's like what you see there in, uh, in your classroom. And again, because there's so many different skills that are needed in manufacturing and in production environments, um, it can be, it can allow for some space again, for you guys to show your powers, uh, what you can bring to the company to make it better. That can lead to uh, more responsibility, more opportunity for you in, in your career. Uh, my another colleague at work that I have, Kyle, he was hired to process people's orders. So every single order, every someone who's in California, which is where we sell most of our boxes to, they place an order. Kyle would process an order, charge their card, and Kyle, he had an interest in coding. W what is coding? Does some anybody know? Can you tell me what that means? To code? Yes, I see a hand up. A coding like C O A T. Uh, code, no, like, uh, code, C-O-D-E. Like, okay, code, okay. Like programming. Oh, like programming? Like, like yes. uh, uh, something move forward or move right. That's coding. Okay, gotcha. Thank you. Yeah, yeah I like that. Yeah, so to Kyle, he taught himself programming to, to code. And so Kyle has since moved on from his order processing job to he is now our what we call our sales analyst and so because we're a small company and because so many people do so many different things which is really nice by the way um titles are it's we don't really care that much about titles but as far as the work he does he does a lot of coding and and he recently put into place a project that saves us hundreds of hours of work a year and it eliminates a lot of human errors. People are not as good as uh, as robots and computers when it comes to repetitive, monotonous details. And uh, so because uh, of the ceiling that we have in our manufacturing environment, it was an opportunity for Kyle to, to grow, to follow his interest and to move up in the company and move up and pay too, which is really cool. And Kyle has a lot of different responsibilities. One of the things that he does now, now that he's not processing orders, is talking with customers who want custom boxes. And if 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 customers want a box that has like a, a photo realistic image on the box or something that actually looks like a picture you'd have on your phone, um, Kyle will work with me and my colleague Nate and a plate making company 
like the plate you saw passed around and they'll take a take an image and they'll separate the colors into something that we call process printing and i sent over um it's now physical object time i sent over a white envelope and they're inside there are some transparencies and i i've separated out those colors like the printing plate people do to show you what the images look like and as these get passed around there's three different ones but each one has four layers to it i want you guys to see how these things uh come to us in individual plates and how we kind of put them through the press so that we can get a finished image that looks like something you'd see in a magazine or like i said on your phone so did I don't know if you're able to find that, but there should be three of them there. One of them should be like uh, the courthouse in town. One will be the the showboat and one will be me climbing on a dumpster. So keep your eyes peeled for that. So these are separated into the CMYK. Who can tell me what CMYK stands for? This is like a, this is, you should get your own cake if anybody knows this. Okay, so see it again, say it again, it's a what? So see it, these are separated out into three different layers, C, Y, M, K. Anybody want to guess? Why? What are you saying? The different color contrast is what Johanna said? Who, who said that? Johanna. Johanna, have you gotten a cupcake yet, Johanna? No. Oh, cool. Please receive this cupcake, not yeah. only from Trumpet's Bakery, but from our hearts. Uh, <laughs> thanks, here. Cool. All right, so CMYK stands for cyan, magenta, yellow, and K uh, is black. So that, that's how the color separations work. So that big ribbon that we saw going through the, the printing press, does anybody remember what we call that ribbon of paperboard? Say that again, Kev. The, the ribbon, the big sheet, continuous sheet of paperboard that goes through our machines. Does anybody remember what that's called? A web? Okay. Oh, did someone say it? A web? Yes. Cupcake that person if they haven't been cupcaked already. All right. Yeah. Yeah, it's called the web. So the, the web goes through the printing press and after it gets printed, if it's printed, um, I mean, can you fold that into a box? So can you fold those in a box of colors? Yeah, so it, the big long ribbon of paperboard. I mean, that's not really, I mean, could you? I mean, that's not a box, right? Mm -hmm. So something else needs to happen to that web, to that that thing. What What else needs to happen? Look at the box that's on your desk. How is that different than a big sheet of cardboard? It has folds. Yeah, it has folds. Awesome. Cupcake that person if they haven't been already. What else does it have? What else do you have to do to it? Yes. Cut it? Yes. You have to cut it, right? So do you guys yeah. have your, your cookie cutters yet? The black and red cookie cutters? No, not yet. Let's get them those. All right, ready, Terry? And I need I my, my sure. toilet paper people to uh, to engage in some box making activity. Who, if someone has toilet paper, I want you to take that cookie cutter, okay, and try to cut out of your toilet paper perfect shape, a perfect C, and 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 then tell me what the results are. And as those are getting handed out, uh, there's those are actual, they are cookie cutters, and that's relevant to our company for a couple of reasons. One is because I'm using it to illustrate how this next process needs to take place, but also we serve a big part of our business is the cookie community. And there are sugar artists who uh, they decorate cookies, and it takes them hours to make a cookie. And when they give these cookies away or sell them, people they're so fancy, people don't even want to eat them. So you can actually, if you brought this home and you're you're looking to make some uh, some school spirit sort of cookies, these are food safe. They're made out of PET, and uh, yeah, they're kind of groovy. I got the uh, the little shape from Clinton Printing. They're they're a nice. Thank you. Yeah, those are awesome. So.
So how's it going? How's it going cutting it out of toilet paper? Are you doing it? How are you guys doing? Is it hard? Yeah, I can't hear you. You can't get through the paper? Well, why? Why not? You don't know? Are you having a hard time getting through there? Okay. So it's, and then you end up tearing the toilet paper. How are you doing, Jakia? Is it hard? It's hard. Yeah, Bailey? You gave up? <laughs> it's really hard. Yeah, that's understandable. Okay. Yeah, it's 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 pretty junky. So there's a couple of things. Hey, a for effort there. If uh, if our toilet paper people who've tried to cut those out don't yet have a cupcake, please uh, give them some sugar. All right, we can uh, do that. What uh, what we use in the shop out in the plant is similar to a cookie cutter, but it's it's actually something that we call a dye. And this okay looks like and I know that you have some windows there in the classroom if you could bust those out and hand them around I would just ask that you guys you guys are young adults I can I I'll leave it to your teacher but um, there's knives in those dies and they're they're inside of the rubber and can you guys see this picture on your screen mm -hmm. yeah what happens is that that's a giant cookie cutter and it gets put into uh, our cutter and it comes down against the the web that that, Can look at one. Mm -hmm. that substrate that big roll of paperboard and it not only does it cut out the cartons the boxes but it also creases them and if you look at uh the win little window blocks that are being passed around in inside of the red rubbery part that we call cork in the industry are knives it's just pieces of steel that have been sharpened and that steel is really hard. And that steel comes down against the paperboard and it cuts out the boxes. And uh, it, you know, it does several ka-chunks a minute. The, it, it goes, you know, boom, 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 goes through. So put this die with this big cookie cutter into a holder called a chase. And then a whole bunch of pressure is pushed down. Uh, who can tell me what the biggest animal that's ever lived is? Biggest animal that's ever lived. Yeah. Yeah. The, the blue whale. The blue Who's whale. Yeah. The megalodon. Okay. Uh, yeah, blue, the blue whale. It's so cool that we're alive, you know, right now because this animal is still alive while we're alive, which is really neat. Anybody want to guess uh, how much a blue whale weighs? Uh, four, five, four, 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 five tons. How much does it weigh? Oh, wait, 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 three tons. Three tons, maybe? That was a guess? Four. Three tons? For, who can tell me how much a ton is? How much is a ton? A thousand pounds. A thousand pounds? A thousand pounds is actually a kip, a kip ton in engineering, and that is not the right answer. And we're talking about a short ton. So you're close, but you're halfway there. So how much is a ton? How many pounds? So 2,000? 2,000 pounds. 2,000 pounds is a short ton or a ton in the United States. So, okay. yeah, a blue whale weighs a lot more than a ton. Anybody want to guess again? One more guess. Someone who doesn't have a cupcake, venture a guess. What do you think? How many? T so you're asking how many tons? Yeah, asking, yeah, how, how many pounds or how many tons or whatever. Um, a blue whale, a blue whale I don't know. All right, time's up. Here it comes. A blue whale weighs weighs 200 or 300,000 pounds. All right? Holy smokes. Two to three hundred so, thousand. So, okay. So one of the problems that you guys had trying to cut a, a shape out of toilet paper is that you didn't have enough force, right? Ah, okay. A cookie cutter doesn't – you're not pressing down hard enough. So if the, the inside of our cutter – is an enormous amount of force. If you look at the slide, inside that machine that's behind Gary and Scott here, that machine presses down with 750,000 pounds of pressure. And if you look in the Ooh. lower left-hand corner of that sign they're holding up, that's more than three blue whales. Wow. And when, wow. when, they, uh, when they installed uh, the cutter in our facility, they dug this big hole. It's about six foot deep. There's a guy in there, and I'm like, "What are they doing?" And it's six foot by six foot by six foot deep, and they they filled that with with steel and concrete, 
And I was like, well, what's going on? Why, why are they, why are they doing that? Um, someone tell me what, what would happen if you tried to, uh, like nail a nail into a board, like on a squishy surface, like on your mattress or a stack of sandwiches or your knee, what would happen? Go right through it. No resistance, right? Right. So you so it's on a real soft surface and you're hitting, hitting the top of the nail, trying to drive it through the board. Is it going to go in? Mm. It'll probably go in. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it'll go in a little bit, but, but it'll be just like squishing all around, right? So what you need when you have when you apply a force, you have to have a lot of mass underneath that. And that's why they had to dig that big hole underneath the, the cutter to keep it from pulverizing our floor and going down to the Earth's core and creating a Clinton volcano. Uh, uh-huh. Or going all the way to China. Neither of those things would probably happen, but it would wreck our floor and cause damage to this very expensive machine. So they filled it. Uh, full of something really hard and really tough, steel, cement, and that's what resides under each of our our cutters. So the cookie cutter's in the machine. It's going over the big roll of toilet paper, and that's what punches out the boxes. But not only that, it also creases them. So it's a lot of pressure. Well, we're we're coming into the home home stretch here. Okay. All right. Let's... uh, if you look at number three there in your on your little box piece of paper thing, yep. it's uh, one of the best things in life is making cool things with interesting people. Does, uh, does anybody know what a cake pop is? Can you describe it? It's a K pop. Okay, hang on. Let her talk. Let her talk. Hang on. Can be real quick so she can talk. Go ahead. Circular cake on a stick with frosting. How's that? That's 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 cupcake worthy. If one is not. Uh, did you get one? Do huh? you have one already? Yes. Yes. Uh, I kind of forgot. Yeah, I just All right. Yeah, a cup, a cake pop is they take a sponge cake and they smash it all up after baking it, and then they mix it with frosting. They roll it into a ball and then they dip it in chocolate mm-hmm. on a stick. And these, uh, some years ago, these were becoming really popular, and we had a lot of our other bakery customers contacting us and saying, hey, we, we need a, pa- a box or some sort of packaging for this. Can you come up with something? Which is one of the favorite things uh, that we love to hear from our customers is, hey, there's something that's taking off. It's not out there. Here's an opportunity. And that, yeah, right there. There you go. That's, that yeah. is it. Hey, props to whoever, whoever set that up. That's probably the most difficult box that we have to uh, to assemble. So that was a tough one, but I can't figure out how to get the tab. All right, so the tabs on the base come out, the top slides over it, and then the tabs go back through the triangle part on the top, which we call the atrium. See the tabs on the ends? The, yeah, the, the straps? Pull? Yep, you pull oh, them out. Yes. All right, so... Uh, yeah, I, that's this, uh, this box was to answer what our customers were looking for. And that was some sort of packaging. So back in 2012, my colleague, uh, Connie Davis, uh, took some of our boxes and taped and stapled them together and came up with this prototype. Can you guys see this picture there that I'm sharing? This was uh, this was our old building, and this is us. We we knew we were on onto something that was special. So I'm taking notes there with a lot less gray hair, and we're just kind of going over the idea to to make this new product. And and uh, the woman I had mentioned before, she's taking pictures. She's like documenting documenting this process. So you know it's fun. We you know we had a lot of laughs. It was cool to collaborate. And because uh, because it's so kind of complicated, 
and interesting. And because there wasn't anything else like it that our customers were finding, uh, I contacted the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office and submitted uh, what we needed to do to see if we could get a patent for this. And so you have you submit your drawings and you type up an, an explanation and a lawyer goes over it and uh, puts it in like legal talk. And we submitted that to the patent office. And about a year later, uh, I've got a letter back and uh, with good news, which is really cool, which was that uh, we were actually issued a patent. And here's a picture of it, which is pretty neat because the, the United States government sends you this and the little red ribbon is actually a real ribbon. It's not just printed on there and it's got a gold seal. And so uh, we got to make this cool thing for our customers. But more than that, we got to do it together. We got to collabor collaborate. We got to bring in a manufacturing environment these different skills together and produce something or come up with an idea or a process or whatever that uh, was pretty unique. And recently, I, we, I had another box design that I thought was pretty special, and I submitted a patent uh, for it uh, to the government again. And, and when you, who can tell me what a patent does for you? Anyone? Yes. Uh, Any? Isn't it like a thing that like the government gives you permission to mass produce your products? All right, that's, you, you got part of it. Anybody else know that, that's, go ahead. Yeah. She said, isn't it also so somebody else doesn't steal your idea? Yes, perfect. So that's exactly what it is. It's the government saying, hey, you came up with this and it's now protected. It's your idea. If someone else wants to make it, they have to get permission from you. And usually that permission comes at a price. And believe it or not, we designed this and someone took our design and copied it and was selling stuff online. And my colleague that you saw in the picture, Connie called her and said, you know, this is this is protected. And one of the things that you can do as a patent holder is to contact the people that are using your idea without permission or license and say, all of the money that you made from our idea, we get that. So <laughs> patent protection is really important. And after a time it goes away and it's like, 10 years or I don't remember how long it lasts, but it's it's more than a decade because I have to resubmit stuff uh, for that. But it was really cool to work with people at my company in this this production or manufacturing environment. And now uh, on record in the, the filing cabinets of the govern, government are is my name and the names of my colleagues who came. And like I said, a little while ago, uh, had another design that I thought was was special enough that maybe you know it'd be cool to get a, a patent to protect our intellectual property. And part of asking for a, a patent from the government is you have to do research to make sure that someone else didn't already think of this. And so it was interesting as I was uh, looking through other things that our patent might you know step on their toes, came across this design. And this this was a patent that was issued to W.C. Dabman in December 15th, 1914. Uh, it's over 100 years ago. And I had to tell the federal government, hey, this is how my design is different than this presumably dead guy uh, and his, his patent. And I don't know, it's kind of cool to think that maybe 100 years from now, someone uh, would be doing what I what I was doing and come across the design that I submitted. And maybe they're talking to a classroom uh, full of kids like like you guys. Maybe it'd be all like brain implants. I don't know what virtual learning is going to be like 100 years from now, but it's, but it's pretty cool to think that uh, we could be in that situation. So it's, like I said, one of the best things in life is to, to make cool things with people who have different ideas and different strengths than I do. I'm not just Lone Ranger. I'm working with a team. All right, guys, home stretch here. Let's look at number number four. Manufacturing produces stuff that is real, things I can touch. Who can tell me what the word kinetic means? 
kinetic. Yeah, go for it. Yeah. Uh, kinetic energy was, you know, whenever you like, you know, stuff walking here, like whenever you're moving, that induces kinetic energy. So you, when there's movement, you yep. got kinetic energy. Yep, you like nailed two it. Two objects rushing against each other. Two objects. Right? Okay. Yeah, you got it. So yeah, the word kinetic it has to do with uh, or relating to the motion of moving bodies. Um, and, and so in a manufacturing environment, because you're dealing with real things, bodies, widgets, objects, there's, there's a kinetic aspect to the job. You're not just sitting on your butt all day, right? One of the hardest parts that I remember from being in school was just sitting there for hours. I got to tell you guys, being out of school is awesome. <laughs> you're going to love it. But anyway, <laughs> um, in a production setting, it's, it's, it, it's different than that. You get to move because you're, you're, you're manipulating physical things in the physical world. And not only uh, do you get to move, but you get to, to get good at things, right? Did you guys see the, the pop bottles that we sent over that have ink in them? Yes. Yeah, and I don't know how, how close to the, to the edge you want to live, but... Um, <laughs> If you wanted to, if someone wanted to put a little bit of ink on a piece of uh, one of those C's, either the craft or the the solid bleach sulfate, the white paper, then it just a little bit goes a long way. It's kind of like hot sauce, right? Um, and I sent some tongue depressors too, and you can kind of smear it around a little bit. But uh, I wanted to, to send you that so you could see what the, the actual ink is like. And, and I used to work at a, a, a box factory in Milwaukee when I was going to college and I was a stock flyer and I worked in the press room. And one of my jobs was emptying the ink out of the printing presses and the ink has a consistency of like uh, of honey, like cold honey. And they give you these big spatulas like it's a big butter knife and you'd scoop it out and scoop it into the bucket. And the first few times that you do it, they tell you, okay, you got to balance the ink on the blade, right? Can you guys see me? Like like this, you got to kind of do one of these deals. You know, it's starting to slide off this way. You got to roll it over, wrap it around. You know, you guys have had honey before. You know what honey's like. And so the ink was like that. But unlike honey, that you get a little on your finger and you lick your hand and everybody's happiness, right? This is ink. And what's ink's job? Yeah. To to, to stain things right with a specific color so i would i would get this ink the first time i did i get this ink out of this trough and i had ink on my pants i had ink all over the printing press i had ink on my arms i had ink on my hands and then you'd scratch your nose i have ink on my face there's it's ink everywhere but after a while me and the other guys that did this you would get good at it you know you're moving around you just like just like in sports or any other activity that you're using your body you 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 get good. You get you, you kind of develop a skill. And after a while, I would be able to go in there and empty those those troughs of ink and have the ink only go where it was supposed to be. I wouldn't get a speck on the press, wouldn't get a speck uh, on my clothes and ruin them forever because ink stains. Um, and it was interesting because there's a new guy that came there and he had experienced this where ink's going everywhere. So he went home and he cut his tube socks, he cut the ends off and he made sleeves that he put up his arms and he had to empty this green ink out of the printing press and he had ink everywhere. He had it in his hair. And I distinctly remember the guy putting solvent. Who knows what solvent is? Who knows what solvent tastes like? No one, no one should know what solvent tastes like because it's poisonous. You do not want solvent on your skin, on your hair, and definitely don't want it on your scalp. But this dude, he just, you know, he was a mess. And it was interesting to go from being that guy to being having a skill, being able to kind of move in the physical world and get good at something. And that's one of the benefits of working in a production or manufacturing environment is because you're moving around, because there's a kinetic aspect to it, because you're dealing with something real, uh, you, you can get good. Who can tell me, uh, give me a couple of jobs that don't make anything, like nothing's being produced. Um, like I say, something, where something isn't made. Yeah, you're not manufacturing anything. What kind of jobs have we talked about? What kind of jobs have you present, just presented on? 
Animal trainer. Animal trainer, right? You 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 don't really have you know you can't say bring something home that you did at work. I guess you could bring like a bobcat or whatever home. Not advisable. Uh, what what else? Um, the military. The military. Yeah, yeah. You're 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 doing something, but there's there's no product, right, to show for it. There's other jobs too. Like if you think about jobs where people wear suits, you know, there, a lot of times they're not they're not making anything. And you know, we need those jobs, obviously, but there is something special about producing something physical that you can actually look at and you can have pride in. In our industry, in the packaging industry. Um, it's said to be recession proof, and which means when there's really hard economic times, uh, people, pa the packaging companies, they still do OK. And ob obviously we're in one of those times because of the coronavirus and our sales at work because people are locked down and they want cupcakes or they want boxes for sandwiches and stuff. Um, we're, we're having a hard time keeping up. And traditionally, that's the way things have been in packaging. Even the packaging we sell needs packaging right so stuff needs to go into something to be shipped and to be given to customers uh, -huh. uh that's really nice because the last one on your sheet and it's just a blank isn't it yep. the blank uh you should put in there money 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 so one of the reasons I love my job, or actually, one of the last reasons I love my job is, is money. Um, the reasons I love my job is because of the people, because of the other things we've talked about. Um, but without the money part, I, I wouldn't have a job, obviously. Um, and here's the thing. People in manufacturing, they tend to have higher average earnings than uh, people in, in other sectors across the board. And, uh, and people who are in manufacturing, generally, uh, they, on the whole, more of those people have retirement plans, which is probably not something you guys are thinking about now. But when we're all old and crusty, we're going to be happy that we have money to, uh, to buy toilet paper and chocolate covered raisins or whatever you guys are into. And cake pops, right? Cake pops, yeah, if there's still a trend at that yeah. time, yeah. Yeah, and the other thing is that people who are in manufacturing, uh, in production environments, those people generally have more health insurance than people that are in other other sectors. In other words, they have those those things, uh, those financial things, things that have to do with money. So there's no perfect career path that is like going to be there for you no matter what. Um, but manufacturing is attractive because you know people need stuff, right? Even in the the gig economy or in, in in the present time we live in where you can get so many things off the internet um you know you still need the stuff that gets shipped to you at our company uh i watched some of the other videos and one of the questions asked is how much do people make where you're at when people start at big river packaging they start at about 12 bucks an hour and they're a hand packer they're grabbing boxes off the machines and putting them into packaging but the people who actually set up and run the machines and you know, make sure that they're operating efficiently. Those guys make about 15 or $16 an hour. Uh -huh. And then as people take on more responsibility, like some of the examples that I shared earlier, um, you know, it goes up from there. Actually, uh, and this is the last thing I'll share with you guys. I actually have a friend who's a doctor and he told me a few years ago, he said, you know what? I wish, uh, I wish I just went and worked at one of the factories in town. And I was really surprised that he said that. I said, why? He said, well, because one, I'd have a lot less debt for, <laughs> for school. But he said, because they make good money and at the end of their day, they're done. They punch out and the day's over and they can focus on you know, their hobbies and, and doing whatever they're doing. He said, at my job, I'm, I'm really, I feel like I'm never not having to think about work. And of course, not every doctor is like that, but I thought that was a really interesting it is. thing to, to think about. So, guys, I, I really tried to make this uh, about you and your futures. It's it's kind of unfair, you know, someone, you know, adults, life is looking at you guys in a few years and it's like, okay, 
you what do you want to do for the rest of your life tell me tell me now let's go say it and it's like i don't know i just got my license two years ago i don't know what i want to do for the rest of my life and it's really can be tough um the good news is there's a lot of we in our country we make a lot of different things and also just because you go to school or don't go to school or you enter one field it doesn't mean you have to do that for the rest of your life you can just do that for a while but i hope that listening to me and the other people that have talked uh, you you see manufacturing as something that's not like uh i don't know how, how could you say this like it's like it's the junky choice does that make sense you guys right right because it's like i mean as we've kind of talked about as we've kind of talked about there's so many different careers there isn't just you just don't and some people say, hey, I don't want to stay within my own town. I want to go. I'm out of Clinton, Iowa. But there are so many different opportunities here in Clinton, Iowa that can make you some pretty darn good money and be pretty fulfilling as far as a job. Yeah, absolutely. And what, what's neat is like the boxes that are on your desk. I, I got to design those boxes. And oh, cool. um, what, when someone like who is a pop star or something, they have so many listens on spotify or something and and they they have so many lists of like millions they they say they go gold or platinum right because so many people are interested in their product it's sometimes i sit around and i think about how many of the things that that there's millions of things that have been in the world that i designed and, and around the world i don't know it's and it is just about the fact that i designed it but me and my friends the people i get to work with we made something and there's like tons of them and these things, uh, you know, those cupcakes are yummy, right? Right. Yeah. So we get to participate in something that makes people happy, and it's real, which is which is pretty cool. So please consider manufacturing. When I was uh, a young person like you guys, I remember talking to my dad, and I said, I never want to do what you do, because I just didn't. I don't know. I didn't. I felt like it was, I don't know, like beneath me or something like that. I love my job. I love that I can look at what we make uh, with pride and say, hey, I'm actually contributing to the human experience. Did anybody not get a cupcake? Oh, go ahead, sorry about that. That's all right. I I'm done, but I wanna make sure everybody gets a, cu gets a cupcake. Does anybody have any questions? Anybody have any? So how many employees do you have at Great River Packaging? We, uh, because of what I mentioned earlier, that we, because of the pandemic, there's a there's a bigger need for our boxes. We've actually added, we have more people employed there now than we ever have. So there's right around just under 45 people that work there. Oh, nice. Okay. All right. Awesome. Question. Can I have a question over here from Henry? Sure. Online. Like if somebody was putting in an order? Yeah. What was the question? I'm sorry. I, what, was it? What's the smallest amount, maybe a box that people can order online? Future business person right there. Yeah, great question. Um, one of the things that sets us apart from our competition, that our competition has now copied us. It's really interesting, guys. When we started, I was looking at all these different websites of these people, and I was like, man, these guys are they are huge corporations and I'm trying to copy the good things that they're doing for our own website and how we how we do things. And now as time's gone by and we're 15 years into this, now those companies are looking at our website and so obviously copying what we do and our products, which is really neat. One of the things that we did early on that separated us was that we sold in smaller amounts. So we sell 10 packs. You could buy 10 boxes. Um, we also have a sample program where people pay like $12 and they can get choose up to five individual things just to try it out in their own kitchen or, or bakery. That's, you know, with all the small companies that are, are happening right now in shipping, that's, that's awesome. It's probably as small as 10. Yeah, one of the things that, that yeah. ways that we're different too is that we cut out, there's a term called disintermediation, which is, uh, I like that word because it's, it, I feel smart when I say it. <laughs> but it just means cutting out the middleman. So almost every single product that we sell has been influenced by our customers that we have a direct relationship with. So, I mean, imagine 
you are driving in your car and you are wondering why one of the buttons is weird and you send an email and the person who writes you back is the person that designed that or the person that works directly with someone like that. That's what it's like for our company. Someone can write and say, hey, this box would be better if you just changed this. And we read that and we'll, if it makes sense, we change it. So there's a direct relationship there, like the cake pop box. You know, if there was like, if we sold all of our boxes to someone else who resold them, they added more money to it, then we wouldn't have that relationship. But it's really kind of magical that that people have access to the people who actually make it. And not only that, not just design, but also manufacturing. I can walk 35 steps out into our manufacturing area from my office and talk to the operator and go, hey, could we make this change? Would it work? And so it's just it's, the distance between the customer and the people that are making their stuff is just it's really small, like this big. Another question, Mackenzie? In order to like get the money off of the thing, you got someone copied it. How do you, how do they know that you made it first? Wait, say that again. How do they know that? If someone copies your idea, how do you, they find out who made it first? Um, she's asking about that patent process. Yeah. And how do they know, you know, who made it first? Well, isn't it whoever applied first, Kip, and got approved? Yeah, there, there's quite the rabbit hole when it comes to patent patent law. But yeah, that's a great question. It's it's the person who files first it isn't the person who thought of it first but it's the person who gets that filing in there's there's some invention inventions historically that have like the telephone or the light bulb where the person who holds the patent isn't necessarily the person that invented it first um but it's kind of a first come first serve when it comes to the patent office and the other there's other some other rules too so let's say i filed a uh something in the patent office and someone else uh has a similar patent they can come challenge us their lawyers can and say hey uh, this is this should not be you know they shouldn't be making this because it was my idea and that happens in the world with other stuff uh -huh. that that's a great you question you guys got have for Kim? one more cam yep the thermal energy can be you know very Okay. The thermal energy. Okay, no. Oh, if physical energy can be turned, okay. I'm trying to remember it. All right, there. If physical energy can be turned into thermal energy, how hard do I have to punch a chicken and cook it? Oh, oh my God. God. That's, no, that's, that's a good one. That's a good one. I mean, I think he's just being philosophical. He's a thinker all the time. Yeah, you, you made me sprain my brain there. I think it's actually good with that. Like, okay. All right, any other questions relevant? They're loving putting the box together, Kip, right now. Yeah. They have, they have a, they're having a hard time keeping their hands off this box trying to put it together. Oh my god. Let's see how fast you can let's see how fast that you can do it, guys. Go ahead. Now you can do it right now. Hang on. One of the things that's, uh, that we like about uh, that box is that the the window material is actually made from cellulose acetate, which is derived from from plant matter, and it's one of the things that sets our boxes apart from our comp competition. And the window's clear, but it's also it'll actually biodegrade uh, versus just something that's strictly made for you know as a plastic material. There's a downside to it as well, uh, in that it's not as stable, so when it gets wet, it can shrink, but it's uh yeah it's cool to be in a business that's sustainable what does that mean that we yeah go ahead uh a business that can survive off its own resources yeah yeah it, it, it is and the resources would be the the resources the planet's offering right it's just not dead dinosaurs that we're we're digging up but you know we use trees like you guys said before wood so the biggest landowners in the United States are usually people who have farms for trees so that they can make toilet paper, paper, and other paper products. So it's cool to be part of something that's not, you know, trash in the environment. Right. Right. Thank you so much, you guys. And uh, it would have been really cool to actually have you take a tour of our company. Um, so, yeah, maybe down the road, you know.
That'll well, happen. If we could get through this, that would be really nice. It, it's very interesting. And to know what we've got, a company and in industry and manufacturing that's willing to share, you know, what to do, the process, explain it all. It does make a whole lot more sense. And, and thanks for all the hands-on, Kip, because it is really interesting. Um, I'm glad to hear that. Okay. Anything else, anybody? All right. What do you guys? Are you are you ready to roll, Kim? You good? I'm ready to roll. I'm gonna go eat some lunch. That's it. Yeah, both of you. I think maybe I owe you both lunch. <laughs> All right. What do you guys say to the Kip then? Thank okay. you. Thanks, Kim. Thank, Thank you so much. And thanks for the cupcakes. Those Absolutely. are awesome. You're welcome. They were really good. Really good. Okay. All right. Thanks, you guys. Take care. Thank you.